Hello. Well, today I want to do something similar to what I I did a few, some weeks back, where I talked about some of the, my favorite films of 2012. I wanted to uh, do some of my favorite films of two, or 1992. 30 years ago. I wasn't born yet, but, you know, 30 years ago. Um... So there's a lot of excellent films that came out that uh, in 92. Um, and also, I forgot to mention something that I got uh, in my last update. I don't know how. I probably should have done it a few updates ago, but I got the Amazing Spider-Man films on 4K. Now, I know a lot of people aren't fond of these films, and I can I, I get it. I think the first one is pretty good. Um, second is where uh, things just kind of fell apart. I do like though the um, the performances by you know Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. They're great. I love their uh, chemistry. I know they also dated during this time, so. On one hand, I guess I could help have had a hand in, you know, uh, their chemistry when they're being, you know, they're going for the things where they're like romantic, but they just had a great chemistry, and I just really like that. And I think also Andrew Garfield gave an excellent performance, uh, even though he didn't have the best material to work with. It's one of those things where it makes the best with what he has, and if what he with what he has isn't all that great. Um, I just really, uh, I enjoy it. Um, yeah, the second film seems to sort of uh, happen with, like, what Spider-Man 3. You know, there's too many villains, and so some people are like, yeah, it's just a big mess. And I think you can make the argument there uh, for this, so, yeah. Excellent film, or films, in the sense that, you know, fairly entertaining um nice to have them in 4k um it's a shame we didn't get to see a third film because i don't know i would have liked to have at least seen what they could do with the third one first one was fine second was eh, had some good moments i think but then the third film i think would have really really shown whether or not this was uh was something that should have continued on or if it should have stopped as as we all know it did i know though in the latest spider-man film he returned as along with toby Maguire. but you know that was like a multiple like, like multiple verse universes and such so yeah Anyway, that's from 2012 and 2014, so 10 years ago and 8 years ago. So in a way, not completely relevant, but I thought might as well at least mention that while I'm thinking of it. And um, some of my favorite films, again, there's really only four here, uh, and that's not to say there's not a lot more. I've mentioned Malcolm X already, and um, and though it's not here, I do love A Few Good Men. That's a nice one film, but there's a lot of stuff I've got here, around here, and so it's like trying to find stuff was kind of a mess, and it was just like, you know, when I thought about it, I'm like, I didn't want it to be a huge thing, you know, because for the 2012 uh, video, I felt like I was about to drop a bunch of stuff at various points and I don't want that and I don't even though well who knows maybe it might be funny to watch somebody bumble about and drop things but it's not so fun for me because I'm like I'm trying to uh, talk about stuff and then I'm also dropping stuff so that's not fun uh, at least not to me but whatever so I've talked about Reservoir Dogs already. Talked about it with my Tarantino films this year. So 
not too much to say, but you know, I love this film. And even though I am disappointed with the lack of special features on here, this is just a cool steel book. I mean, we'll just look at it. It's just, I know for some who might be squeamish, you know, ear comes off. <laughs> There's the warehouse. Right there. It's just the cool steel book. I know not every steel book is awesome and worth getting. I know that. But for the one steel for the steel books that look cool and look nice, I don't mind getting them. It just depends on what it looks like, you know? And, uh, yeah. Well, of course, the contents of a, that are on the discs are also important, so. This film looks good, so no real complaints here. Um, a Few Good Men, as I mentioned. I love that film. Uh, you know, Can't Handle the Truth. All that good stuff. No, actually, it's right here. Well, maybe I'm... Yeah. Good film. Uh, Rob Reiner, excellent director. Tom Cruise is excellent, as is Jack Nicholson, of course, and uh, Demi Moore. Uh, Aaron Sorkin, the the writer and uh, it's based off of his play and uh, yeah. it's amazing how um, Tom Cruise did not get nominated for the Academy Award for this but I guess because Jack Nicholson gave the most bombardic most uh, huge performance you know I guess in a way it does sort of make sense but excellent performances, uh, great story, you know, about a, a Navy lawyer, uh, as they say here, gung-ho legislator, or, yeah, litigator. It's always nice when you can't speak properly, even when you're looking at something, and then it's just like your brain tells your mouth to say something different. Yeah. I'm ready for Best Picture at the Academy Awards, Film Editing, Sound, Best of Supporting Actor. <clears throat> and yeah, it's a excellent film from beginning to end, really. Uh, Kevin Pollack and uh, Kevin Bacon, Kiefer Sutherland, J.T. Walsh and James Marshall are also in this film. Excellent film. You know, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's pretty great. Um, and next I want to talk about is two um, films with Pacino. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. You know, about salesmen and uh, selling real estate and how, you know, they're you know, Al Pacino plays the best one. Uh, Ricky Roma. Uh, Shelley Levine. Uh, Jack, who was Jack Lemon, used to be an excellent salesman. But as time has gone on, he isn't as great as he used to be. Uh, Dave Moss is uh, Ed Harris. He's a veteran salesman. But uh, yeah, Ricky Roma is the one. Uh, Pacino, who is on a uh, hot streak and is an excellent salesman. Also has uh, Kevin Spacey and uh, <clears throat> Jonathan Price, Alec Baldwin in one scene, and Alan Arkin. Everybody is excellent. You know, uh, it's based off of a play and... Uh, Truly amazing, in it. You know, uh, just a just a tour de force of of a film worth 
excellent acting. You know, it's rated R's. You know, there's a lot of language, so on that end, you know, it's like you gotta, if you're not fond of stuff like that, then, you know, I don't know. I think it's worth watching, though. Uh, excellent film. And, uh, yeah. It's just a great film overall. Just beginning to end, excellent all the way around. Um, I could say more, but if you haven't seen it, so you probably have though. I'm sure to some, at least many of you. But yeah, this is a great film. Uh, great performances. Pacino was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He did not win. I shall get to who did win later on. But he was also nominated for Best Actor, in which he won for Scent of a Woman, his only Academy Award in his entire career, playing a blind lieutenant colonel. Chris O'Donnell was, is the uh, young guardian who's hired to take care of him. And, um, you know, he has his own plan to what they're going to do. And, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman is in this film. Very young. He, uh, yeah. Uh, he and Chris O'Donnell are in trouble. You know, they're, uh, there's a, uh, nobody's really going to, you know, that apparently they saw something and uh, who did a prank and, and they want to know who did this, but, you know, it's not going to snitch on people. And so that's going to get Chris O'Donnell in trouble because, you know, well, yeah, he doesn't. He, he he doesn't have a rich, rich parents, and so Philip Seymour Hoffman's character does, as do others, and so yeah, he uh, he's in a pickle, and um, Al Pacino, you know, uh, it's very gruff, and uh, yeah, he gives a fine performance. You know, I don't want to. You know, say that he was bad, but I think it's clear when watching this and knowing that he won the Academy Award for this film that it was because he didn't win prior. You know, he didn't win for Godfather films or Serpico or Dog Day Afternoon or Justice for All, Dick Tracy, or didn't even win for Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. One's for this. And again, not a terrible film or performance, but best performance in the term, at least best performance in the sense like, you know, uh, his performance as well as Oscar nominated performance. No. Wasn't acknowledged for Scarface, but that film was so controversial when that came out that, yeah. The Academy does like to not at all acknowledge many controversial films if they can help it. So, yeah, no big surprise. And uh, I mentioned before about um, Malcolm X and how, you know, Denzel Washington was great and would have been very deserving of the Academy Award for Best Actor that particular year. And I still stand by that, but I also want to... Uh, highlight somebody who also was deserving and uh, Robert Denny Jr. and Chaplin. Now, I know a lot of people aren't the biggest fans of this film because in this, it isn't completely accurate. But, you know, I don't totally uh, have a major problem with that. The film is good. I think the film is good. Fine film. Entertaining. May not be the most accurate per, uh, depiction of uh, Chaplin's life. 
took did they take liberties where certain liberties didn't need to be made sure but you know what i'm sure we can look at so many other uh, excellent biographical films and say the same thing that certain uh, events certain moments in somebody's life why change it you know they were great already but you know then again we'd have to be going super detailed um geraldine chaplin plays her own grandmother in this film um miva Popovich, diane lane dan Aykroyd, kevin klein are all in this film along with anthony hopkins or kelly uh Marissa Tomei, James Woods, Nancy Travis, John Thaw, a lot of incredible actors and actresses, and of course Robert Downey Jr. is amazing. He is fantastic. Uh, whatever grievances you might have with the film's accuracy, Downey's performance is incredible from beginning to end. It's just like flawless. He is Charlie Chaplin. I think that's one reason I'm like, this. he should have won for this film. But of course, you know, there's Denzel Washington. And, you know, I'm like, you know, ties can happen. You know, I'm like, so if anything, maybe Denzel and Robert Downey Jr. tie for this film. You know, for this film and Malcolm X. But, you know, ties don't really happen much, but... Or they don't really happen at all anymore. You know, happen only a couple of times, and, that, and that's it. But you know, great film, and also yeah, it's pretty cool. I think he is Chaplin in this film. He is he's perfect in the role. And the last film I want to talk about that is Unforgiven, the Clint Eastwood film, which won Best Picture, Best Director, um, Best Editing, and Best Supporting Actor for Gene Hackman. I love this Western. You know, it's very dark. It's very even brutal at times. fantastic all the way around I mean I'd probably have to just do my own film uh, or a, my own video on this film it's it's amazing I just there is so much to say about this and I just love it from beginning to end I'll just I'll just say that fantastic film Honestly, this is my favorite Western. I think, I believe, this is my favorite Clint Eastwood film, too. Not my favorite performance by him. Yeah, I think it'd be, like, second. Um, Gran Torino, I believe, is his best performance. But this film is just incredible from beginning to end. And um, Clint Eastwood, Gene Ackman, Morgan Freeman, Richard Harris... Everybody in this film is excellent. It's just, just all the actors and actresses are just amazing. He, Clint Eastwood did an, an astounding job. Deserving of Best Picture and Director, my opinion. Uh, even actor, I guess, you know. I don't know about a three-way tie or how popular that would have been, but if there could be a three-way tie, I think Eastwood would have been pretty deserving of a of that Oscar for his acting, but at the very least, I think uh, the Best Actor Academy Award should have been a tie between Robert Downey Jr. and Denzel Washington for Chaplin and Malcolm X. But if a third way tie would be not seen as too much for some people, I think uh, Eastwood would have been pretty good to uh, put there. Uh, yeah and uh, Gene Hackman won supporting actor and he's very good 
you know. But I don't know if I would say his performance was better than Al Pacino in Glengarry Glenn Ross. Nor do I think I would even say it was better than, say, Tim Roth in uh, Reservoir Dogs. Um, I know many people would be like, you know, Michael Madsen or Steve Buscemi for uh, Reservoir Dogs. And I can completely see where people are coming from. But for me, I really uh, am really uh, blown away by... Uh, Tim Roth's performance in this film. It's uh, it's amazing. You know, it, it, I, not only is this the film that really put him on the map for Americans and so many other people who weren't able to really get much of any or many uh, British films in the non, you know, UK uh, regions, but great film, uh, great performance, by everybody, but I don't know. I think for supporting actor, I think Tim Roth, though I think it could be argued he was also like the lead, but you know, because of how much screen time he has, but you know, it's one of those things. He wasn't really known by many people at this point. Um, Harvey Keitel will be the de facto lead, um, which I think, you know, in a way you can definitely make that argument that he was the lead but with um tim roth i think a co-lead would also be better but if anything if he was up for any awards probably would be up for supporting actor you know getting demoted like pacino did for the godfather you know he's in the film most of the time but he wasn't the biggest star or the biggest name didn't have it at that point and so the biggest name got the best actor nomination uh so i guess for me my personal pick for supporting actor would have been tim roth for reservoir dogs but if you were going to have somebody for uh, supporting actor in reservoir dogs be it michael madsen or steve buscemi or anyone else in here i could definitely see that argument to be acknowledged but yeah These are all great, great films. There's so many others, but, you know, I didn't want to have too much. And yeah, I remember, but like, wait, a few good men's down there. I, just, I don't know why I didn't pick it up, but I guess just looking various other places and just kind of slipped my mind of actually looking more thorough around this part of the shelf down here. Hello, um, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, filming this the day after I did all the rest of the uh, uh, stuff, I'm talking about all the, these films here, um, because I realized I kind of wanted to talk a bit about a couple other uh, movies um, that came out in 92. One of which is uh, Malcolm X, which, you know, I have mentioned in the video, but, you know, this is a, it's a very good film. Um, it's quite long, you know, 201 minutes, so, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, three hours and 21 minutes, um, and, um, you know, just like seeing the basically the overall, you know, life of Malcolm X and how he, uh, how he started off and then how he, uh, you know, began to change, um, at, at different points in his life from being in prison to later on and, it's just a very good film, you know, and I mentioned, you know, of course, like Chaplin and uh, Unforgiven, you know, for Best Actor, you know, of course, Denzel Washington was nominated, uh, gave a very Oscar-worthy performance, um, and, you know, I've thought, you know, of course, you know, 
uh, I think my statement I made about uh, Robert Denny Jr. winning the Academy Award for Chaplin is still, uh, still stands. You know, and I thought of like people, of course, you know, tying and such, and he and Denzel Washington tying the for these films for Malcolm X and Chaplin would still be very. Uh, still be very uh, worthy wins uh, if ties were you know <clears throat> uh, able to exist uh, uh, these days um, seems like a genuine tie would have to be like two people get the same amount of votes and you know, of course there's a majority of votes um, but I don't know who knows maybe they don't want ties anymore, and so if that happens, they might have people vote for who they like better, you know. Um, of course, I'm just guessing. I don't know that for a fact, but it wouldn't totally surprise me to find out otherwise. Um, um, and of course, I think if there were three-way ties for, like, acting in any category, I think that would be, so that would be quite rare. And if Clint Eastwood did tie with Washington and Downey, you know, I don't think that would have been a terrible thing. But of course, you know, that would have been a very long moment for like an acceptance speech, of course, because you got three people, whereas with two, it would be fairly long already. But, you know, who knows? Maybe the fact that there's multiple people uh, who have won be they on stage or if they're called one at a time, it would be very, you know, shocking. And uh, I guess in a way, and so it's like they got to keep their speeches short. So who knows? Um, but, you know, uh, Spike Lee, of course, made this. And uh, it's a very well-made film. Uh, it's based on the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. You know, as told by Alex Haley, and um, the film was written, co-written by Spike Lee and uh, Ar Arnold Pearl. Um, Spike Lee is in this film as uh, one of uh, Malcolm X's friends. Uh, at the beginning in the jail time, Angela Bassett uh, plays his. Uh, Malcolm X's wife and Delroy Lindo is excellent in, in this film and um, you know everybody is everyone is uh, fantastic and uh, it's also interesting to see Al Sharpton in this film you know back when he was still fairly big because these days he isn't anymore and so it's quite interesting to go back um and see certain prominent people uh, that we know of, or at least hear of, if you don't have, don't really see Al Sharpton, I guess depending on where you live, might not, but yeah, he, uh, you know, he's, he looks fairly different these days. Um, uh, so yeah, he uh, he's in this film for a moment. And watching the behind-the-scenes stuff is really interesting, too. Just how they went about making the film, as well as uh, certain uh, difficulties they had at points, you know? Like, wanting to actually go to Yeah, to uh, to the Middle East uh, to uh, to you know for the <clears throat> for that big, the big scene at the end of the film where you know it's a very transformative moment for Malcolm X as he's interacting with people that he previously thought he wouldn't necessarily be interacting with much other than certain day to day things that was kind of like. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you, you can't really avoid uh, 
some people like, you know, white people like how there were some blonde haired, blue eyed uh, uh, people who were uh, devout uh, faith of Islam. And so that kind of sh shatters certain things about uh, certain uh, thoughts and views he had. And um, also sort of distancing himself from sort of the, the, the people who help br bring him into Islam and you know and of course this sort of sort of the beginning of his of his own undoing unfortunately of his assassination um, and of course you know there are things prior to that but you know the, a moment like that even made him more want to you know disassociate himself from those uh, the, those people that uh, had a hand in introducing him to the Islam and everything. It's just very good film. I might talk about this overall one day in more depth. Um, but yeah, it's a very good film. Um, worth watching. And the other film I want to mention for its 30th anniversary is Batman Returns. Um, I talked about this already before, you know, last year when I did all those Batman films from the Adam West film to, um, and even I guess overall I have talked about the show, into the four films uh, that were made by Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher. I don't uh, love this film as much as Batman, uh, uh, Batman 89. Uh, but it's still a very good film. Uh, Michelle uh, Pfeiffer, she does a great job as Selena Kyle Catwoman. Um, to some people, that that's their definitive Catwoman. Um, and to others, not. But, you know, she's still amazing in the role. I think she's, a, she's fantastic. Danny DeVito has the Penguin. He's pretty gross and disgusting. Not my favorite version of the character, but, you know, for what's in this film, it's fine. Um, you know, you got Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne Batman again. Does a very fine job, competent job, obviously. You know, Michael Keaton uh, generally does that. Um, and he's, you know, um, not in this film as much as he was in Batman. But what he is on screen, still uh, nice to watch. Um... He's not my favorite uh, portrayal. He doesn't give my favorite portrayal performances. Bruce Wayne Batman. Christian Bale is mine, which I kind of said before uh, on various occasions, or at least I think I implied it, considering how much I love the Dark Knight trilogy. But Michael Keaton is very good, I think, with what he has. Sometimes the scripts may not give the character of Bruce Wayne Batman a whole lot to do compared to like the villains. And if there was any sort of complaint I would have with these films, it's that the villains are always more interesting than uh, the hero. I get that. I get why. Um, but, I don't know. I think part of the reason I like the Dark Knight trilogy, or actually I know, not think, but it's because, you know, Bruce Wayne is more interesting than we've seen him before. And that's, of course, no fault of people like Michael Keaton or Val Kilmer or George Clooney sometimes it's like a combination of what they have to work with as well as the direction um and Tim Burton was always more interested in the villains too you know he listened to uh him on the documentaries and stuff here um you know it's he's more interested in that and that's fine um but I would like it if Batman wasn't in the shadows as much of course, he doesn't have to be out in the open all the time, like when it's night out. But, you know, I would like to see at least a little bit more of Batman's perspective on certain things. Because, you know, it's clear he's at various places and then he shows up. Kind of interesting to see his sort of view or vantage uh, on certain uh, occasions. But, you know, of course, that's just me. Of course, that's me sort of like in retrospective of a film like this. But, you know, it's still very good. It 
still an excellent movie from Tim Burton and um, you know this film was more of a Tim Burton movie than say the first Batman you know he was able to do more with what he wanted with this um, and I guess depending on your view that's either a good thing or a bad thing um, for me it's kind of like a uh, it's nice to see what Tim Burton has in store for what he wants Batman to be um, but on the other hand I guess with that it's like you know uh, it is more focused on the villains not so much on Batman or Bruce Wayne so for me that's kind of a bummer but you know it is nice to see what Tim Burton wants to see Batman has and so on that level it's very interesting and good uh, but you know because of that he didn't get to make uh, the third Batman film so uh, and that film is has very mixed reactions and then Batman and Robin isn't it isn't really loved much um, but you know this is a very good film uh, I've already talked about it already so I don't have too much to say other than I enjoy it. Again, I don't enjoy it as much as, say, Batman 89, but I enjoy it um, all the same. It's a, a fine movie. I like to watch it every so often. Um, and it's just always nice to <laughs> rewatch when I have, like, some sort of marathon. You know, it's not one that I'm, like, I'm dreading or anything. Um, it's one that I think uh, is quite entertaining and well made and so if anything else gives it a thumbs up for me just on that level um, and of course you know in 1992 Batman the animated series came out I haven't really talked about that too much but again I think part of the reason is because you know you know I don't dislike that show I enjoy it, but for me, I just kind of, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, in the sense like it's sort of like this sort of series of films where Bruce Wayne Batman isn't as interesting as the villains, but from the perspective that the villains are interesting and kind of gives it more depth, you know, that show is great. For Batman, you know, there aren't as many episodes specifically de uh, dedicated to Batman and Bruce Wayne and we see him uh, throughout the whole there are definitely some episodes there but not as much as say like something about like Mr. Freeze or uh, Harley Quinn who was introduced in that show and um, even the Joker at times seems to have more interest interesting stuff going on um which i guess makes sense you know he's batman's arch enemy so you know if you're gonna have at least any kind of villain have be just as interesting if perhaps even more so than batman it would be his arch enemy but yeah uh, also uh kevin conroy passed away this year i know i didn't mention that before but you know he it was it was sad that he passed away um Again, while not my personal favorite Batman, Bruce Wayne of all time, uh, he still did a great job voicing the character. I know he played Bruce Wayne in one of those uh, CW shows. I never saw them because there's too many. And by the time I was very much aware that these shows were really intersecting because I just heard them one at a time and then later some of those shows started to like you know cross over he was in one of those crossovers and um he played bruce wayne uh, in an episode and then that was it didn't really hear hear too much so i don't know whether or not he did a bad job acting wise or not but you know i'm more familiar with his voiceover work and he was a excellent voice actor um so there's all that that was great and I don't want to say he'd be a bad actor in front of the camera. Um, 
because obviously I haven't seen that episode, nor have I seen really much of what he had done. Because I know he has done stuff before, voiceover stuff, so um, I just really haven't seen much of all that work for like the TV shows and such that he has done in live action form to see him act, to see just how, you know, uh, if he's very good as a, as a live action actor and he should have done more stuff there or not. Um, <clears throat> You know, I haven't seen it, so I can't comment, and I can't comment on his uh, live-action portrayal of Bruce Wayne. Um, but, you know, he was an excellent uh, actor in his own right, from what I've seen uh, as, as the as character of Batman and Bruce Wayne. You know, uh, he will be missed, and I guess, if anything... That could also be the end of Mark Hamill as the Joker. I know he has said before he would retire the character, but, you know, he has often on kept playing the character. And it seemed like, you know, uh, until the very day, both, you know, either Kevin Conroy just stops, like he's done with the character of Batman, like he's done all he could ever do and he wants to do other things. Like, oh, when that happens, then he would be done as the Joker. Because that was his Batman. You know, for him, without his Batman, it wouldn't make too much sense for him to be the Joker. Um, you know, I'm sure he has nothing against people, any other actor who would voice Batman. It's just for him, it's like they started out, you know, as Batman and Joker together. So for him, it would just make sense that they would kind of like stop together, like whatever their last... Uh, uh, project as those characters would be, I guess, perhaps for Mark Hamill, that would be it. Um, of course, that's just guessing and uh, on my part, so maybe it shouldn't be that way, but it is. So, yeah, um, I hope um, this was uh, uh, all right. I didn't mean to talk as much as I have for this little addendum, but. A, it's longer, so I guess that's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your view of it. So, Yeah, I hope uh, this was a fine kind of addition. Hope it didn't totally um, ruin anything, you know, but, you know, hey. I hope this video definitely finds you well, uh, for sure, and I will end it here so that you can... Uh, see the little last uh, like moments of the original uh, uh, recording I made of this so yeah I'll just let the the rest of that sort of like roll basically but anyway I hope this was fine um, I know there are people who enjoyed the last what I kind of did of 2012 and it was kind of a nice way to sort of like go through some of my favorite films of a certain year you know just kind of quickly go through them um because you know I try to do things like on Fridays and there's only so many Fridays in a given year um but you know being at the it's the end of the year like yeah I can make some more videos just for fun and I could probably do that more often which I might do that the, the next year, but I don't want to make any promises. I really want to keep with the Friday thing, you know, because I think it's good to have something on uh, for schedule on, like, at least once a week with this sort of series. And then other videos I'll do that I've been done doing here and there. I think they'd be fine to do uh, whenever. Um, uh, but, you know... Uh, I will take a break for next week, being at the it's the new year and all that good stuff. So probably won't have a new video for next week. So sort of just gonna enjoy the end of the year, and uh, yeah, I hope all of you will have an excellent new year. I hope all of all of you have had a uh, pretty good, uh, if not excellent, year this year. <clears throat> My year's been pretty good. 
can't complain too much, so, you know, I won't. Um, but, yeah, I hope all of you are just doing well. Hope all of you are, have had a great week. We'll have a great weekend and a great new year. And I hope your year was great, too, this past year. So, until next time, I hope all of you are doing well. And I will definitely see you all next time. So, uh, yeah, until then, please take care. Bye.